Shabbat Shalom. Have you ever seen a video of the toddler candy challenge? Here's what happens. A parent puts a camera in front of their child sitting at a table. They put some candy in front of the toddler or the young child and they say, don't touch the candy until I get back. I'll be right back. Don't touch the candy. So that you see the child kind of looking around, going through this inner moral dilemma of should I, shouldn't I? Usually they give in in the first couple of seconds and if there's two children, forget about it. But watching their dialogue where they weigh the options together and the older cautions the younger, it's humorous on the one hand, but it's also pure and innocent. Our Torah portion this week contains the story of the golden calf, perhaps one of the most, if not the most, infamous transgressions of the Israelites at the foot of Mount Sinai. Before Moses ascends the mountain, he reassures the people of Israel that he will return to them. But they grow impatient and begin to question leaving Egypt altogether in the first place. After some time when their patience wears out, they decide to abandon what Moses has told them and they collect all of the gold and riches they took with them from Egypt and create the idolatrous golden calf. And yet, can we really blame them for doing such a thing? Remember, this is a people who just chapters before were slaves in Egypt and whose freedom is still relatively very new. When the situation becomes too frustrating and difficult, they transgress by reverting back to what they saw in Egypt that feels familiar. The children of Israel are acting like an immature, ill-equipped group of toddlers who don't yet have the understanding or the capacity to wait patiently for Moses' return. When Moses descends, he is infuriated and acts impulsively too. He smashes the first set of tablets and reprimands the people harshly. Could Moses have had a little more sympathy and compassion? Could Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, have acted in a way that better acknowledges the people's collective traumatic experience of leaving all that they knew behind in Egypt as slaves and their feelings of abandonment and uncertainty? Clearly, the Israelites weren't a people who were ready to receive these laws and commandments. The next time we feel impatient and extremely frustrated, perhaps we can take a breath and pause before acting impulsively. Probably something that's easier said than done if you're dealing with actual toddlers, and it definitely takes practice. But we can start by considering the same grace and understanding that we ourselves would ask for in a similar circumstance. Shabbat Shalom.